So, it's yours. How are you? I'm fine. Very good. How are you? Not bad at all. How are you? How are you? Extremely good. Extremely good. So, how did it go today? Amazing. I was waiting for this moment so long. And uh, when you're preparing for the show, there comes a time when you're like, okay, now it's time to really rock the stage. And I'm so happy. Yeah. The stage is amazing. The sound is amazing. Every everything is just amazing. Yeah. Everybody here has probably uh, explained how your song is and what it means and everything, you know, in their blogs, newspapers, whatever. And how would you describe your song, you know, going from you personally? Personally, this is a song that I really try to to sing about my inner feelings, about my inner world. Um, I thought about writing a song about the whole situation in Europe, for example, now, or what people really need, and, and you know. But in the end of the day, every problem that we have, every sickness that we have, every every for, for everything, the solution is just pure love. But I didn't want to sing about you know what I love you and you love me, but. <laughs> I wanted to, to sing about the pure, just the feeling that it can change everything in a second. So it's really a love wave that can heal you, and this is what everybody's singing for. I think. How did the song come about? Lili Nagasadian is the composer of the song, and she knows me very well since seven years. And she's, oh, by the way, she's there. There she is. Hello. <laughs> Besides being a professional composer, she's one of my best friends and she knows me so well. So I think it really, I, I believe that everything happens to the perfect time in, in, in life. And I think it was about time that this year comes together like that because she wrote this song especially for me. So for example, sorry? Taylor made for you. Yeah, ta yes, yeah, yeah. And um, a lot of people even tried to sing the song, but they said it's kind of difficult, they cannot sing it, but she knows the color of my voice, she knows what I can do, she knows the strength that I have, so it's really like Taylor on me. Yeah. Perfect. Do we have any questions from the audience? Feel free. Stand up, stand up. Why not? We start from the other side. Do we have a microphone? There we are, just behind you. And you have a microphone in a second. Oh, okay. Hi, hi. Uh, hi. My question is about the award that you received in 2012. I think it was Sexiest Armenian from what? From a, a, a newspaper. Our Star magazine, yeah. That's it. Uh, how did you feel getting an award from your appearance rather than, from, than for your music as a musician? It's, it's actually a very good question because um, I think, of course, it's really um, have to how do you say it in English? Flattering, yeah. It's really flattering to get a, to, to, to get a compliment like that. But, um, and I'm really, really thankful for that. But of course, I, there were certain times when I was like, okay, but did you hear the song that I was singing and not just staring at my legs? But on the other hand, I think I, I used the, that attention. It took me years, but I used that attention so people really started to respect me also with my voice and the music and they started to listen to it. So I think, yeah, it was a long road, but yeah, it was, it was yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Gentlemen in the back, in the blue and black, stand up and state your name, please, and uh, your media house. Hey, my name is Daniel. I'm from Eurovision Austria. Hello, Hi. Hello. Hello. My question to you is, you participated in Germany in The Voice. Yes. Compared to the experience in that time, how is now to be a star in Armenia and how did you develop? Oh, you know what? I was thinking about it when I, when I uh, stepped on the stage because I was afraid. I was like, I remembered the moment when I stepped on the stage of The Voice. I was in a bit, I was secure and then I was, you know, self-confident. But when I stepped on the stage of the voice, my legs were shaking and I thought that the same thing was going to happen here. But I realized, just now, like 30 minutes ago, I realized, okay, I think there was a really, really good process of the last years because from the voice and now, happened so much, I stepped on the stage, I was like, okay, I'm ready for this, I'm not afraid at all. So, um, yeah, it's, there is a process going on. <laughs> Gentlemen in the green, stand up please. Thank you. 
Hello, Lupita. My Hello. name is Fernando Mendes. I'm with Radio International. Uh, well, I have read in your biography that before you step on stage, you like to meditate with your crystals. Yes. May I ask you which crystals are these? What are the properties and how do they help you? Um, to be honest, I'm not that good in the names because, as you know, the crystals have really strange Latin uh, names. But there is one crystal for strength. There is one for creativity that opens up your creativity. There is the rose one that's for balance and, and calmness. So um, I actually have lots of crystals and I change them all the time. And um, to be honest, I, I forgot to take my crystals with me. So I took uh, not to, to Armenia when I went to Ar Armenia in Germany. So I found a bunch of beautiful natural crystals that I've really taken out of the mountains in uh, in Armenia, and I didn't have time to analyze them, but they're with me. And yeah, I think it, they give me lots of strength. Strength. Hi guys, it's Danny from ESC Bubble. First of all, I want to congratulate you on a fantastic rehearsal and uh, give me goosebumps today. I thought it was amazing. My question is around your voice. You have such a strong, powerful voice, and for every run through today, you gave a really, you gave it 110%. How do you take care of your voice and make sure that when you do give your performances, that you do it to the best of your ability? Well, you know, of course, there are some vocal rehearsals that I do, sit-ups every day, like special ones to, you know, strengthen up the muscles and everything. But I learned one thing, everything is going on here. My, my vocal teachers always told me, you're not allowed to drink coffee, you're not allowed to drink, to eat fruits with um, zoiva. <laughs> and and um, you're not allowed to drink, you're not allowed to smoke. But, and you know, when you, when you have these things, you know, they tell you you're not allowed to do this, then your body is really reacting strange to these things when you do it, you know? So, I saw, there was a moment I said, you know what, fuck it all, I'm doing whatever I want. <laughs> and you see the so I do whatever I want. The only thing that I really take care of, I try to sleep really good, because that's the really most effective uh, medicine. Thank you. Over there in the back, can you stand up, please? Thank you. Hello, Lisa. Hassan and Yusuf from Vision Magazine in London. Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm really impressed by the whole visual act you've got and your outfit <coughs> with the suit, swimsuit and the cape. You look very much like a superhero <coughs> and you look quite powerful on the stage. How did all that come apart? Thank you very much. But I have to tell I'm not opening up the, you know, all the secrets, but. Uh, don't get so secure that this is really my final stage costume. <laughs> Maybe this was just a little gimmick for the rehearsal, so I'm not... Yeah, thank you very much, but... <laughs> just so wait and see. Wait and see, <laughs> definitely, definitely. So how was the month up to your vision game for you? What have you been doing? We've been rehearsing and uh, preparing and getting ready, but I have to say the whole team it's so amazing, you know, we're like really positive and really like, they, they're so in it, you know, everybody's taking your job serious, so um, we were so good prepared that I had so much time in the last week, I'm like, okay, you know what, I cannot just sit and, and, and just rehearse, I mean, we rehearse this every day, but I had so much time that I started to record my album. And uh, I wrote new songs and um, yeah, I think it's, same like, Sex, you know, if you don't, yeah. if it's just, it just feels so good when you write a new song, you know, that's, yeah, that's how I feel about it. So, I wrote a lot of songs in the last song. <laughs> <laughs> Besides sex, where do you find inspiration? <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong. Uh, traveling, traveling. I have a bunch of crazy friends all over the world, and um, Right now we can't wait for the Burning Man Festival. Does anybody know the Burning Man Festival? Yeah. yeah. That's where I get inspiration from. So the, the songs you're writing now, where are they going? You're not what about sex. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> musically, musically, where are they going? What type of style are you aiming for? If you know my song, Simple Like a Flower, um, it's a nice style. It's a lot of live music, live band. I've got great musicians on my album. From, from Copenhagen, from, from Austria, Austria, from Germany, Berlin, like really, really great musicians. 
And um, you know, I grew up with Lauren Hill, A.G. Stone, and all the soul, soul Motown sound. And uh, I think you can really hear that in my music. You know, it's and, and the lyrics are very personal. Um, I stopped, you know, thinking about, oh, you know what, the hook has to be like this because maybe this is something that the radio will play. No, I'm just really writing what I, what I feel about it. This is really personal and honest. Gut feeling. Yes, sir. Stand up, please, in the front. She will arrive here in a split second with the microphone. Hi, my name is Farouk. I'm from Cocorico Vision magazine in okay. France, in Paris. Congratulations for your performance today. Uh, your music, your song, is mixing actual music, it's very actual, and traditional Armenian music. Was it important for you to have this mix for representing Armenia to this contest? That's a good question, thank you very much. Um, you know, it wasn't planned because, well, actually, it was in the beginning when, when we decided what kind of song that we should take. We said, we don't want to put something Armenian in it because it has to be something Armenian. I think nobody wants to listen to something that you like force into the song. Um, the Zuna part, it's an old Armenian instrument, came so naturally. And I think if you, if you put these elements in it on the right way, then everybody will like it. You know, I think it's, it's interesting to put an ethnic part in it. Like, I got a lot of people telling me, oh, you know, the instrumental part is so impressive. So I, so I think we did a right job. It was, it's not too much, it's really tasteful. So, yeah. So I'm happy that it uh, came out like this. Yes, sir. I'll just ask before she arrives. Uh, if you can ask the audience here, uh, it's always debatable. Uh, if you want an ethnic uh, style in the song representing your country or not. What do you think as an audience? Should there always be something from that country in a song? See how many uh, hands I can see for that decision. Or is it open to do whatever you want? Uh, it's 50-50 maybe. Yeah. Good. Here we go. It's always a discussion. She'll sell the song. Sound like that. Okay, sorry. Hi, it's uh, my time from the fame from the Netherlands. Ah. Well, you lived a long time in Germany, that's why so many German people are here. Yeah. I was thinking, what brought you back to Armenia? Uh, in 2009, I decided to come back to Armenia because I wanted to build a bridge for my parents, actually. Because my parents, they are. I mean, they lived their whole life in Armenia. They just came to Germany and it happened like that to, to give us a better future. To me and my sisters, actually, also in the audience. My sister's there, Mariana. <laughs> she just flew from India. She's living in India. So. Um, I wanted to build a bridge because my parents, I, I felt that they're not feeling home in Germany. They left their home to give their kids a better future. And I know that my parents would never go back to Armenia before we, like, are getting married and, you know, like, organized our lives. So I thought, okay, if I start to study in Armenia, maybe my parents, maybe we'll, like, build a bridge and my parents come back to Armenia. And um, besides that, I never had Armenian friends in Germany. I just had, like, international friends, but uh, Armenia was really just at home. And um, I wanted to know where I'm coming from. It was so interesting for me. And um, yeah, so I went there and I stayed there for six years. And until now, I just go back and forth to Germany and Armenia. In the blue, at the back, you can stand up. And we'll have a microphone in a second. Hi, Brown Joseph, ESC Daily. Firstly, the staging for your performance of Love Wave, was that being considered while you were in the composition stages of Love Wave? Especially during the first minute of your song, because there's a lot of uh, uh, influences within it that seems to be that it was being considered way before during the composition. Are you mean if that's like, ha happens spontaneous? Yes. Or... <coughs> no. <laughs> Everything is well planned by Sasha Jean Baptiste sitting here. I'm so happy that she's, she's responsible for the staging. Um, the good thing is that Sasha, I think she totally sees me and uh, knows and just, she just got the whole picture. And uh, she didn't think about it just today. <laughs> she is everything well planned and um, I'm really, really thankful. I just, to be honest, I saw 
the show for the first time today, but um, I'm really, really thankful and happy because now I see, okay, everything makes sense. Everything comes together and, yeah, so. I'm yeah. also interviewing you and watching yourself on the stage. Oh my God, it's always strange to watch myself. You're like, oh, I have, I think I'm, oh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> no, um, it was, really really interesting it was really interesting it was strange but interesting but you know the staging was just so i don't know i really really like it and powerful. Uh, it's really powerful yes yeah, it underlines the song and my, my myself and, and yeah felt very great to see that so ladies and gentlemen give her a love wave again and thank her very much <laughs>